Welcome, and thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. We want you to fully engage with us, so feel free to gather your family, invite a friend, or if you're alone, we trust that you'll have a wonderful worship experience with us today. Our worship service will begin in just a few minutes. This morning, let's ask now, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts now. Father, through every song that we sing, Father, that you may be pleased with the worship that comes out of our mouths, Father. Father, cleanse us, make us whole. Speak your will to our lives today, Father. Guide us. Hear the cries of your people, Father. Let every song resonate in our hearts now, Father. Let it minister to us. Let every word, Father, come alive in us now, Father. groaning it is 
is a new creation coming. It is. It's the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst. It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Father, we make room for your presence in this place because you are great. You are awesome, God. This is my surrender. 
to you and you alone so that you can do through the power of your Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives whatever it is you want whatever it is you want us to do to be in this world today and Father as we as we look towards our church and the mission that we have here we ask Father that you would in the name of Jesus just touch the hearts and minds of each one of us to give 
as you've called us to, to be obedient to the word so that, Father, your work may go forth. I thank you, Father, for all of those who consistently and, and, and always obey and give so that this work can go. Father, we, we just see examples of it day after day. We just thank you for your provision. And Father, I ask now that you bless gift and giver so that your work can go move can move forward, Father, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ will not just be in this place, but outside of this building, Father, in this community that we serve, in this state in which we live, in this country that so desperately needs Jesus, and to a world, Father, that we know and see every day needs to know Jesus. Father, help us to be part of that work that the gospel of Jesus Christ will shine brightly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The song says to make room, right? And as we're singing a song, it's just like just seeing it, right? You make room. But in order for God to do the more and to give you the more, right, you had to make that room. You got to release those things that he says release so that he can have that space, that place in your life so he can just continue to give you that more. We want more, but sometimes we don't know how to let go of what he says let go of. We have to let go of those things that he says let go so that, yes, I can pour the more. So you have to purposely make room so that he can do what he wants to. So today, I don't know who it is. I know myself. I take this for me. Yes, Lord, I'll take and remove those things out of my life that need to be there just so that I can make that room for you. So let's start that year. Let's start this year off like that. We were talking about resolutions earlier. Right? So let that be a resolution. Lord, I'll make room for you to do whatever you want to. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's sing this part together. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. You may be seated. Uh, throughout this month, uh, we're having an emphasis on prayer, especially corporate prayer. Uh, we have a really cool opportunity 
to gather together here every Tuesday at 7 o'clock and to pray together. Um, it's important for us to gather together and pray. And I'm going to ask Tisha to come up um, because I have to ask her a question, see, and put her on the spot. That's what we do. ask you a question. What is important to you about corporate prayer? Corporate prayer is important to me because it's a time where we come together and seek God together. I know we're all plagued by many different things. We all go through trials and it's a time where we show compassion and love for one another. We honor God by doing that. Um, so it's important to me because prayer has changed my life. Um, so I welcome you all to just come and join us on Tuesday where we can show love and compassion to one another and uplift each other during our trials and tribulation. Amen. Thank you, Tisha. Uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I think all of our lives have been changed by the prayers of someone uh, that have gathered together to pray. And at the end of the month, uh, the end of January, we're going to have an opportunity to gather together with a whole group of churches and folks to pray. I don't believe the location has been selected yet, but uh, uh, it'll be the last Tuesday of the month, and uh, we're pretty stoked about uh, having this opportunity to lift up to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the prayers of his people. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's power in prayer, and I think each one of us sitting here today are examples of that. So let's remember Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Thank you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and sing this last song before the message. Amen.
Good morning, and welcome to Commitment Community Church, a place for all nations. My name is Pastor Jose Torres. I'm one of the assistant pastors here. Pastor Cedric, our senior pastor, is at PA today um, at Riverstone Church for the installation of a good friend of ours, Pastor Austin Delgado, who is assuming the responsibility of leadership as the head pastor of that church. So uh, if you can remember him, Pray for him, that God guides him and leads him so that this church can grow the way God wants it to grow and to do what God wants it to do. We welcome those who are watching on Commitment Online, and we pray today that God speaks to every heart according to your needs. God knows your needs before you even ask, and he will answer your prayers according to his will. Remember, the most important thing is that his will be done in your life. And when he does his will in your life, everything comes out perfect. But when we ask, sometimes we ask wrongly and we don't ask for the right things. But he knows what we need. So open your hearts like the song was saying earlier. Let us open our hearts. Let us remove those things that are not worthy, that are hindering for him pouring into your life and create space for our Lord and Savior. Before we start, I'd like to pray and ask God to take this place. Heavenly Father, we come in front of your presence one more time, give you the glory and the honor that you richly deserve, dear Lord. We ask you now, dear Lord, that you remove me and place yourself in front of me, Heavenly Father. For you and only you know the needs of your people. You know our needs. You know our Cry to you, dear Lord. Answer today, dear Lord, according to your will, dear Lord, whatever is best for our lives, Heavenly Father, and help us to understand, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of your scriptures today. Dear Lord, as we share your word today, let it impact someone today, dear Lord. If they're in need of salvation, that they may receive salvation. If they're in need of healing, that they may receive healing, Heavenly Father, whatever the need is. You are the great God, the great provider, the great giver of all things, dear Lord. And I know that I know that you will accomplish your will in our lives. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we started a new sermon series um, last week entitled, Gone Fishing, Let Your Nets Down. Uh, As we continue to progress on the second week of this, um, I'd like to take a moment to reflect what Pastor Cedric shared with us last week. And uh, we read in Luke 5, from verse 1 to 6 last week, uh, where we find Jesus, he's uh, at the edge of a lake, and he is trying to teach a large multitude of people that came to hear him. And it says that the, the, the crowd was so big that it started to press on Jesus. And Jesus felt that pressure, and he looked to the side, and he saw two boats. And then he saw the fishermen that were assigned to those boats cleaning their nets. And he decided to go onto one of those boats. And he got in the boat that belonged to Simon Peter, who would become one of his disciples. And he got in the boat and told him, Simon, Take me out a little way so that I can teach these people. And Simon, being obedient, rolled the boat out to a certain distance where Jesus sat down in the boat and started ministering to the people. And he ministered to them for a while. And after he finished, the scripture says that he told Simon, Simon, let us row out to the deeper end and cast your nets into the water. Well, 
as Pastor was sharing, he said, Simon said this, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. Really? You want us to go out deeper and cast our nets? We didn't find anything. We're the fishermen. We know what we're doing. We've been doing this a long time, and there's no catch out there. How many times has our Lord and Savior asked you to do something that he wanted you to do or to go somewhere where he wanted you to go, that, to that new pond, to go to that new pond, like Pastor said, maybe from your Starbucks, you, he's sending you to the Wawa coffee. It's not as good, but there's a purpose there for you. There's a reason why he wants you to go to that Wawa so that you can cast your net because there's a great catch that he knows is there, but you don't see it. There's someone there in need of that word from you that would lead them to know Jesus Christ. So Simon, being an obedient person that he was, after making his short excuse, said, okay, Lord, I'll do what you say, and we'll go out deeper. Last week, Pastor Cedric emphasized on excuse. What is the reason why we use excuses every time God asks you to do something? And he pointed out three things. The first was we give God the excuse because we're preoccupied with things. The daily things of life have preoccupied our time. Oh, I don't have time to go visit that person that's sick at the hospital because I got to work today. Or I have to take my car to the shop. Or I already made a pre-commitment with someone else that I can't break. Excuse. Secondly, he said that we're previously ineffective. We were previously ineffective in what he's asking us to do. So we live in our failures instead of beating our failures. We live in our failures. Because I failed before, I'm not doing it again because I don't want to fail again. I don't want to feel that way again. And lastly, he said, we are paralyzed by personal efforts. Why? Sometimes we think we know what to do and we don't listen to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's instructing us to do. And because we are gifted in certain ways, gifted in the gap, pastor said, that gap, it's not a gift that's given from God, but, you know, some of us have the privilege of speaking to others and people tend to listen to us. And because I, I'm good at that, uh, oh, I know what he wants me to do and go ahead and, and start doing it. And we, we, we mess it up. We paralyze what God wants us to do. We hinder what God wants us to do and to reach and who we have to reach. So those are the three things for excuses. But I was quickly reminded of something. Uh, I was a police officer for 23 years for the city of Camden. And my first day in the academy, they taught us one thing. And some people on the staff already know this because I use it a lot. My children know this because I use it a lot. And it's what is the definition of excuses in the police academy? It says this. Excuses are the tools of the incompetent. We have built monuments of nothingness, and those who specialize in the use are seldom capable of anything else. So when you make an excuse, you are building a monument, a wall, something to hinder what God wants to do. We're building walls to hinder what God wants to do. And what does happens after that? Nothing is done. Nothing is accomplished. Why? Because we built those walls to stop the flow of Jesus Christ, his word, his love, his mercy, his grace, his salvation to reach others. So if you ever hear me say that, you're going to laugh because I say it a lot. Because I believe excuses are just that, a tool that incompetent people used to build monuments of nothingness. And it hinders what God wants to do through you. You are capable. 
You are able to do whatever God instructs you to do. Why? Because he would not instruct you to do it if he did not give you the power. He is the one that's going to do the work. You're just a mere tool that he wants to use. So allow God to instruct you like Simon was instructed. Come on, Simon. I know you're the fisherman. You've been doing this for many years. I know you've been fishing. You said you were out there all night and you didn't catch them. But listen to me, please, and do what I say because I know something that you don't know. There's fishes out there waiting for us. There's people out there waiting for us. So do what Jesus is telling you to do. Pay attention. Do not put excuses up. Pastor also shared that when we listen to, to our Lord and Savior, there's great risk of the unknown, the fear of the unknown. Oh, I don't know if I can, if I can sing in front of everybody. Uh, I know that he's given me this gift. I'm hiding it inside my heart. I sing from here, and, and man, my heart palpitates when, when, when the worship team is up there, and I would love to be up with them, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I'm not worthy. I think I, I can't do it as good as they can. If he's gifted you with something and you're not putting it into practice, guess what? What good is that gift? Take the gift that God has given you and put it into practice. And do not be fearful, for he takes over the fear and takes it away. Any doubt, like the song says, the lies and the doubt, we're going to lay them down and allow God to work through us. So, yes, is there risk? All the time. In everything we do, there's a risk. But the risk is just a little thing. Because then Pastor talked about the results. The results when we take a leap of faith that we don't know what's ahead, but we know he's saying go ahead. We are going to go there because he said go. I'm going to use Sister Joyce for an example. When she was called to South Africa... She didn't know much about South Africa. Africa. She didn't know what she was walking into. She didn't know what ex- was waiting for her. But she knew that she knew that God was calling her to go. And she was obedient and she went. And I've never heard Joyce talk anything negative about South Africa. I know there's a peace and a joy because she's in the place that God wants her to be. Because she heard, didn't surrender to those fears, was obedient. And the results, we hear about the results, how God is blessing that area, that community, those people through Joyce and her works and what she's doing for God. She's doing it for God and for the people, and God is giving her the blessing In that area, the word of God is getting out. People are being saved. People are being touched. People are hearing about the work that she's doing, and they're coming there. So there is always a purpose that God has. We may not see it with these physical eyes, but eventually we'll see it. And today we're going to talk about when we see these things, certain things happen. So today I would like to share... A couple things. It's going to be like four points that I want to touch on. And what happens when we obey and do what Jesus asked us to do. We're going to be reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. But I'm going to start on verse 4 first. And it says this. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your your nets for the catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But I will do as you say 
and let down the nets. And when they, verse 6, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So, verse 7, so they signaled to their partners in the other boats for them to come and help them and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. So this leads us to our first point. If you have your highlights, it's the first point. It says, when we obey God and do what he says, it gives us a great weight. Weight. What is weight? Weight is something heavy or, or a load. Sounds negative, right? Like when the weight, when you gain weight, ooh, that's negative because oh, I don't look good. <laughs> or when you put on a weight and you're carrying, it's heavy and it causes you to go down. It seems more like a burden instead of a blessing. But in this particular verse, in this particular part of the scriptures, it's not a burden, but a blessing that God had given them. The church has been called to serve this community. And because we launched over 25 years ago, the small group that started, the fruit or the weight that came from that first 10 people that started this church can be seen today. We have three services. Usually the services are packed with people. We have a church in Colombia. We have a ministry in South Africa. We have a church starting up in New York. We have another church starting up in PA. Why? Because the weight of the blessing is starting to be seen. The weight of what God has in store for this church is starting to be seen. But I tell you one thing. Prepare your hearts for what is about to happen in 2023. Because greater things are coming. Because why? Because we are listening to what he wants us to do. And we're not just standing there in fear, but we're marching into that. We're carrying our boats into the water. We're boarding our boats. We're gathering our nets, shaking them out, putting them in the boat. And we're heading out deeper to where God wants us to be. And I guarantee you when we cast our nets in what God has instructed us to do in 2023, the great catch is awaiting. The great blessing is awaiting. We are now fishers of men, women, children, and youth. Every last one of them are like a small fish or a big fish that's waiting for us to be drawn them into our nets so that our boat can be filled so that it feels like we're sinking, but know that it's all about Jesus and that Jesus wants to impact those people, impact us, and do greater things with this church. I recall four years ago, we were an independent church, stood alone. We, we weren't associated to no one but Jesus. But God instructed our leaders, our elders, and our senior pastor that it was time for a change, that a risk had to be taken so that we can venture out deeper into the waters that God had in store for this church. And we joined the EFCA, the Eastern District. And I can say, because I've seen it with my own eyes, we didn't know what our purpose was. We didn't know if they were going to help us or we were going to help them, what God wanted to do there. But God had a plan with this church to be an impact with this district. Why? Because within four years, our senior pastor is now a co-superintendent of the district. Some of our leadership here are now part of the team that leads the district. Why is that? 
Because we're open to do whatever God instructs us to do, to go deeper into the place that God wants us to go and to cast our nets. We cast our nets and we joined our brothers and sisters in the greater catch. The district is growing. The district is flourishing, not because of us, but what God is doing through us. So be open to whatever God is instructing you to do, because whatever he is instructing you to do, there's going to be a great weight coming. A great harvest. And if your heart is not prepared to receive it, you're going to be overwhelmed. And you're going to be fearful because you're going to think, oh, our nets are, are tearing it says the nets were tearing, but they didn't break. The ships were sinking, but they did not sink. What do you think it didn't sink or the nets didn't break? Because Jesus was in the midst of that transaction, that incident, what was occurring. Jesus was there. So I don't know about you, but wherever Jesus is, I want to be. Because where he is, there is peace, there's tranquility, there's power, there's authority, there is love, there is mercy, there's everything I need. When I'm down and lonely and depressed and feeling like the burdens of this world are going to overtake me. When I'm feeling sick, I know that I have my great healer in front of me. Wherever he is, that's where I want to be. So if he says go to South Africa, <laughs> guess what? I'm booking a flight. I'm going to South Africa. If he says go to Colombia, oh, last time you were in Colombia, you were in an accident. The car flipped over. Two people died. There's a risk. I'm going. Because it's, if I die doing the work of God, guess what? I'm going to a better place. I'm going to a better place. So the great wait, wait is one of the things that happens. When we do what he says to do. I'm going to read verse 8. It says, but when Simon Peter saw that, saw that, when he saw that the, the boat was, the nets were being filled, they're almost ripping and the boats were almost sinking. It says, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man. So what is the next thing that, next point I wanted to bring to you? That when we do what Jesus asks us to do, it gives us a great awakeness. It wakens us up. We are aware of who we are, how unworthy we are at times. To be in his presence. Because God is going to do what he's going to do. Regardless if we do it or not. But when we do it. We're like oh Lord I'm not worthy of this. I, I shouldn't be up here preaching. I'm not worthy of that. I'm not, I've never been to seminary. I've never been to, to any uh, educational schools to learn. Now, that's Pastor Cedric's job. Or I'm not worthy to sing on the worship team because I, I never went and learned music. Or I'm not worthy to lead any ministry because I've always been a follower. But God says, although you may think you're a sinful man, we are all sinners. The word says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. Why? Because our father Adam started the whole mess. We are sinful. We're born into sin. But we know that we know that Jesus Christ came as our Messiah, our Lamb, to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to die be buried and was resurrected in victory. And because of that blood, we are a new creation. We have been made new. We're not perfect. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. We'll never be perfect until the day we are in his presence. 
or until the trumpet sounds. First, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 58 talks about the imperishable and the perishable. Yeah, this, this flesh is always going to be against what God wants us to do. It's always going to give us excuses why we shouldn't do it. But our spirit, if it's aligned with Jesus Christ and allows the Holy Spirit to guide us, great things can happen. Great results will happen. And we will be aware of what he can do for us and through us and for others. In Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 9, says this. They are all straightforward to him who understand and write to those who find knowledge. So who, who is our knowledge? Who is our understanding? Is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our all. He gives us the knowledge. He gives us the understanding of the things that we cannot understand. And don't allow the enemy to, to lie to you and say, and remind you of your sins that you, you already laid them at the cross. <laughs> There's a tendency sometimes that we, we have as humans is, oh, I'm going to surrender it all to God. I'll bring it to the pulpit and I'm going to lay it at the feet of Christ and I lay my burdens down and I give all my sins to Christ. And you put it all in a nice, neat bag to give it to Jesus so he can throw it out in the trash. But before he can reach it, you're getting up and grabbing it back. Why? Why do we do this? Repeat our sins over and over and over and over and over and over. Once you repeat it a second time, you should be asking God, what is it that I need to change so I don't repeat this? What is it that I need to give up so I don't repeat this? When Jesus comes into your heart, you become worthy. You become worthy of doing his work and being in his presence and feeling that joy and peace that he can only give you. Verse 9. For amazement has seized him and all his companion because of the catch of the fish which they had taken. When we listen to the Lord Jesus Christ and do what he says, we become in awe of the great things that he does. You know that the same Jesus Christ that walked this earth many, many years ago is still walking this earth. We physically cannot see him, but he's still around. And everything, all those wonders and signs that he did um, at the time, he can still do today. In Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 43 says this, Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were, be, were taking place through the apostles. So this is long after uh, Jesus had left this earth. The apostles were doing what Jesus instructed them to do, to preach the gospel throughout all the areas. And it says that they were doing wonders and signs were being accomplished through what they were doing, not because of them, but because they were preaching the gospel. They were preaching Jesus. They were believing that God can do miracles and wonders and signs. And they stood in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and proclaimed those victories over those people. You think that can happen today? Yes. Yes. Most certainly it can happen today. It has happened today. It will happen today. Why? Because we have a God that will answer our prayer if we believe and we have faith that things can accomplish. It says that you can ask a mountain to move, and that mountain will move if it's in the will of God. What mountains are you, are you talking about? A physical mountain, Pastor? No, I'm talking about those mountains of sickness. When you're, when you, when you're confronted with an ailment that you, you, you think that, 
oh, it's going to take me out. This is it. I'm done. I shared this many times with you guys. It's going to be 26 years. A doctor told me I had six months to live. And I wasn't right with God at the time. I was really straying away from him. But he permitted that sickness to be upon me. But because I have a mother who prays, I have a family that prays, I have friends that pray, they began to pray over me. And a change started coming over me. I knew that I had to make my ways right with God to prepare my heart so if I were to leave this earth in those six months that the doctor said that I was right with God, that we were at peace with each other, and that I had an opportunity to enter into his kingdom, I began to pray. I asked for forgiveness. I asked him to cleanse me and to prepare my heart. I was at peace. People that visited me were like, man, how can you be at peace? Because I have Jesus Christ now in my heart. And I know that he gives me peace. And before the six months could come, within two and a half months, the answer to my mother's prayer, my mother's prayer was this, and she tells me this all the time and reminds me. That's why when Pastor Ken said that the power of prayer is essential. And I love that our church is going back to prayer, and that 2023, there's something special about corporate prayer. There is a reason why God has moved our leadership, our pastor, to go into prayer for this year, because something is coming. Something is coming. You may not see it yet, but something great is coming. And the power of prayer is the beginning of all things, where God then hears his people and commences to work miracles and wonders and signs and multiply the church to a point that we were going to be at awe with him. My mother's prayer was this, that before her birthday, that I either was going to be miraculously healed or that he provided me a liver. Five days before her birthday, the doctors call me. They say, Mr. Torres, don't get your hopes up high. We have a liver for you. But there's a lady ahead of you on the list, but she's running a fever. And if her fever doesn't come down, you're next on the list. I said, okay. I said, Lord, I don't wish any ill will to anyone, but let your will be done. Six o'clock in the morning, phone rings. My wife answered it. I don't even hesitate one minute. I walk to the bathroom, go to wash my teeth. And she's screaming to me, hey, they want to know if you can be there in an hour. I said, an hour? I'm a cop. <laughs> We'd be there in a half an hour. Uh, it was in Philadelphia. So um, we headed out. We got to the hospital. Ten hours later, um, I was operated on. I was ten hours later in operation, and I woke, and I felt like a brand new man, new energy, strength. They told me I was going to be in the hospital for maybe a month or two, recovering. I would be in ICU for maybe two weeks um, because my God is so great, and he hears the prayers of the saint and those that believe. He makes it even better to show them that he is still in control. I was in the hospital three days in ICU because they couldn't find me a bed on the regular floor. And by the fifth day, Guess where Mr. Torres was heading out of? I was leaving that hospital, heading home. Five days from the day that they called me. Five days before my mother's birthday. I was home for my mother's birthday. So when you ask, ask in prayer, believe in it done, specifically ask for what you want. And if it's in his will, he will do it. I am living proof of it. When God is in the midst and we do what he says, we are in all. We become in all of him because what he gives you is greater than what you're asking for. For he knows what you need and he knows what you really, really need. Oh, Lord, I need a companion. Uh, I'm a young man and I'm really, really in need of a, 
a female companion, a wife that is going to make me better. But you, you know what I need, Lord. And what you expect and what you get. Pow. Wow, Lord. Whew, you are amazing. This woman is tremendous. Wow, she is helping me in my ministry. She is helping me a lot. You sent me the right helper because he knows what you need. He knows what you need. It just takes time for us to ask and do what he tells us to do. Amen? So we can be in all of him. I love being in all of the Lord. I love being surprised by the Lord. I love seeing God work. I've seen people being healed. My brother Danny, he comes here on occasion with his wife. Uh, last year he was diagnosed with cancer. They found a tumor in his chest. They took the tumor out. He dealt with the chemo for a year. He went for a checkup in December. In December, um, he was here in the church, and I was in the foyer, and I was helping with the VIP team. And I saw people praying over him and him crying. So I'm like, what's going on? He didn't talk to me. He didn't say nothing to me. I'm like, what's going on? So he tells me. They received news from the doctor that, the, that they found something. They seen something in the last test that he went for his checkup. And I'm like, oh, Lord. But you healed him, Lord. We're not allowing these doctors to say anything negative. No, no, Danny. No, trust God. He wouldn't have healed you. He wouldn't have permitted them to take that tumor out and find it and scrape it out and, and you being in church. No, no, we're not believing that. Know that God has healed you and claim it. He said, well, they're going to test me again next week and then the doctor's going to give me notice. A week passed. I get a call from Danny, my brother. Hey, Jose. How you doing, Danny? Get your results? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, Lord, prepare my heart. They couldn't find nothing. I said, what? I said, glory be to God. Didn't I tell you? He heals you. He heals you. Claim it. Receive it. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you and to lie to you. Be in awe of what he has to give you. Do what he asks you to do, trusting, even if you don't know where the road is going to end, just know that where it ends, he is waiting for you. Let us read the last two verses, 10 and 11, to conclude. Verse 10 says this, And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, for now on you will, now on you will be catching, now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the calling of the disciples. So our last point that we want to stress is that when we do what God asks us to do, although fear may come, doubt may come, it stirs a great courage in us. It stirs something new in us, rejuvenates us, so that we can march on to do the greater work of God. A little story about the, these first disciples that God called. They were fishermen. And because they were fishermen, they knew how to cast the Lord. So they were perfectly prepared to cast the word of God, to lure people into the word of God so that they may receive Jesus Christ into their lives. Did you hear the story about, about these guys, the apostles? Have you read the book? It's a bestseller. It says that Jesus Christ used these men that left it all. It says that when they got to the land, they left the, the nets there. I don't know what happened to the fish. It says they left it all. 
They left everything there. The nets, the boat, the fish, and they followed him. And you know what happened afterwards? Those guys, whew, those guys were mere fishermen. And the others that joined them, that God selected and sent them out. They turned this world upside down. They turned it upside down because they believed, they walked in authority, they did what God instructed them to do, and even the risks that they took when they knew they were going to get beaten for preaching the gospel, they were okay with that. They knew that death may come, they were okay with that because they were doing the Father's work. And because of them, we have heard the gospel. And we got the opportunity to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And we have the same opportunity to walk in that authority, to walk in that belief, to do what God instructs us to do, and to go out into this world preaching the gospel to everyone that would be willing to hear it, to pray over the sick, to claim in authority healing over people. To give word of comfort, to give words of counsel, to uplift those that are down, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share Jesus for this lost world. When we walk out there in this earth, when we're outside these walls, and you're looking around and you see the devastation of how the enemy has the world entangled in his web. It hurts. Our children are being entangled into the web that this enemy has done. And if we don't pray for them, if we don't share with them, we don't teach them the way of the Lord, we're going to lose them. But we have the authority to claim in Jesus' name victory for our children, victory for the youth. What's happening in Philadelphia, they're trying to find a resolution for it. The only, the only resolution there is is prayer and requesting from God to intervene. And when God will intervene, he will put the right people in the right places to do the right thing, to cleanse that city of that terror of death of young people. Only he can set them free. So, today, if you heard me, and the only thing that you got was, listen to Jesus and do what he says. I think you got it. Listen to Jesus and do what he says. Whatever he's instructing you to do is because he believes that you can do it. He, you are the chosen tool that he wants to utilize to do his work on here on earth. Church, 2023, make room in your heart for what God has in store for us, for that great catch that's on its way here already. He knows where he's at. He's sending us there. Why do you think that we're doing a prayer gathering? And it's just not a prayer gathering here. We're looking for a bigger venue. Why? Because the bigger pond, there's more fish in that pond. And we're calling our companions, the other churches, come on. Hey, listen, this is what God's telling me. Is he telling you to say, oh, yeah, go out deeper. Go, yeah, he's telling us to go deeper. Well, let's all go deeper. Let us all cast our net so we can catch as many, many of those men, women, children, and young people that need to be caught for Jesus. We will be in awe. We will become aware. And we will have the courage to overcome. If you have never taken the step to know this Jesus that I'm talking about, today I afford you the opportunity. As we close our eyes and bow our heads, I would love to lead you in a prayer.
Heavenly Father, this is the first time I've really heard about you. And this pastor has told me that I will be in all of you if I just listen and receive. So today, I make a commitment to you, Heavenly Father, that what I'm searching for, that you be the one to guide me to it, that your will be done in my life, cleanse me, free me from this entanglement that I'm in, make me whole, so that I can also be a fisherman for your works. Help me to understand you, receive you, and walk in your authority. I pray this in Jesus' name. Come into my life and guide me through your Holy Spirit. I pray. Amen. But for those that have already made that commitment and that have been putting excuses up, the tools of the incompetent would build monuments of nothingness and those who specialize in the use are seldom capable of anything else. You are capable of other things when you don't put up the walls of excuses and allow God to do his work through you. I ask you to pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, when doubt, fear, excuses come to build monuments of nothingness, to hinder your work through me, I pray that you break down those walls, those monuments, so that I can be free to walk in what you have called me to do, to do what you have called me to do, even though I may not know the end game, dear Lord, but that I may fulfill in obedience what you asked me to do so that your work can be done, that others may be reached, that I may be in all of you. Help me be courageous to take that leap of faith to do what you asked me to do so that your will And bless this church in 2023, dear Lord, and lead us into that pond, to that deeper waters so that we may cast our nets to do what you've called us to do We ask you this in Jesus' name, knowing that the victory is already ours. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. If you're ever in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey region, we hope to see you in person. But for now, please tune in next week here at Commitment Online.